did you see that Atletico Madrid made a loan offer for Callum Wilson? Yeah. Which Newcastle yeah. Again, like, there's nothing Again, in that for Newcastle. <laughs> it's such a bad We've offer. heard they're a selling club, but yeah. we're not even going to bother. Just Are people just taking one? the piss out of Newcastle now? Is everyone annoyed maybe. at what's the happening? Piss yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're going to be dumb, you've got to be tough, everybody. Welcome to the Football Ramble. Chelsea are in the final and Gavin Phillips is on the move. It's Wednesday, 24th of January. I'm Marcus Speller. I'm Jim Campbell. I'm Pete Donaldson. And I'm Andy Bradford. Hi, everybody. What a show we've got for you today on this wonderful Wednesday. And what a way to start it. A little lyric there from Gary Ricks, friend of the Ramble, of course. Nice one, Rixie, uh, for that intro line. You can become a friend of the Ramble by heading over to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. And if you do that, you'll get a special extended version of the Ramble today and every single Wednesday for just $5 a month. So head over to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. <sighs> Gentlemen, we had a semi final last night, and what a tie it was, Andy. <laughs> It was a great performance by Chelsea. To tie around the neck. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. hold really tight. Yeah. I know, you didn't really get what I was at there, Andy, did you? <laughs> no, 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 not really. It was a shellac, and it was like <laughs> Middlesbrough were baby seals and Chelsea were crazy Canadians. <laughs> 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 they absolutely clubbed them, didn't they? They, they did. did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jim, um, what did you make of it? <laughs> um, my highlights for Middlesbrough were that they have a player called Marcus Force, yep. which must be enjoyable for you. Very This enjoyable. is how much I have to reach. <laughs> um, <laughs> even when you factor in Morgan Rogers scoring a lovely goal, just puts him in the shop window. Yeah. Like, it could not really have gone much worse, could it? It's really, really unfortunate for them. Mm, I think, it essentially, they just were the architects of their own downfall. They were too pumped up for it. And very, very early on, they just made mistakes that let Chelsea just take it away. And you could see mm-hmm. the third goal is the point where you see Chelsea think, we're going to have a lovely time here. Yeah. We're going to have a really nice I time. Think here. Yeah. I think you're harsh on Middlesbrough saying they were, they were, you know, saying that they were too pumped. I just, I just think they just got battered by a much better team. Yeah, oh, I, 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 well, I, think, I, I think that was what, uh, you know, opened the door for the battering. I see. I think they didn't have anything left in the tank. They've, they've got a shit ton of injuries and a really talented set of players mm. who are coming together as a team um, who got a load of shit for their performance in the first leg but still created enough chances to win it comfortably can't forget that Andy started taking the chances because I remember thinking when they got to to 2-0 they haven't really had that many opportunities mm. and that feels like a light bulb mm. moment for this Chelsea because there have been moments of this season where they've played pretty well you've been able to see what Pochettino is trying to do but they've never looked capable of of, of putting it in the back of the net, but all of a sudden that click, click, clicked. Well, the, but this is what I mean, though. I think Middlesbrough allowed that. You know, with the, the second goal was a little bit of a mix up in the box, perhaps harsh to characterise yeah. it like that. But obviously, Johnny House and you know, the own mm. goal really unfortunate, and that's that's a great example of what I mean. Just too ready to just go and go and. You really want to blame Middlesbrough up. for this, don't you? <laughs> it's, they it's, got beat <laughs> six one. Yes, it's very hard, Marcus, to um, create memorable moments in a, a relatively unfashionable, unloved um, cup competition. But I think Cole Palmer and Sterling... You still saw they from were last just, year's final? Just, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to win it like anything. But um, yeah, I just think they, they did their very best sort of go, come on, <clears throat> let's just create some memories, guys. Yeah, and they did. Mean, yeah, Cole Palmer. Is there one of the most delightful things at the moment in English football is when Cole, Cole Palmer opens the body and side foots mm. the ball at goal. Oh, the little mm. feint as well that yeah. he did for his first goal. It's Absolutely such, beautiful. It's gazelle-like. He's I, such a lovely player. Yeah. Mm. I think obviously, you know, the, the, the opposition um, plays into this a little bit with, with respect to Middlesbrough. But you, I think you can <laughs> see... Um, where Chelsea are going to be good with some of these partnerships. Like a few years down the line, if they keep these players together and there's no reason they won't, you can see maybe they might get back to sort of business as usual. But it's, it's Palmer, Fernandez, mm-hmm. and the, the way they link up. De was really yeah, great, I, it, I, I thought as well. You know, just having that sort of marauding player on the right because Chilwell made a massive difference to them. Oh, they made his first start in 118 days. Good yeah, to see him, and, Andy. But to come back cold and play like that, mm-hmm. I mean, they couldn't deal with him I mean, from, it from, from the very off. And I think if you look at the way that Middlesbrough had lined up, a huge part of, we talked about the injury, a huge part of what made them so competitive in the first leg is Isaiah Jones who did the running of about three players mm-hmm. he's not there and mm-hmm. Chilwell can do what he likes exactly. you, you look at the, the teams that went up last season and how they're faring in the Premier League this season and, and then you see 
mid table um, Middlesbrough, and to be honest, mid table Sunderland as well yeah. uh, against Newcastle. Against mid table Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the gap. That is the gap between yeah. the, the Premier League and the yeah. Championship, isn't it? That, that's the true gap, and that's what it should, should shouldn't look like. Yeah, true. Middlesbrough have spent a similar amount to Chelsea, though, haven't they? Of late. <laughs> um, uh, but I mean, when you say that if they can keep these players, you are right in saying that. But I don't think it's a question of keeping them. It's a question of not signing so many indeed, players that people indeed. go, oh, not yeah. replacing them we have to no do reason. squad rotation just to prove that, that, that we are actually using some yeah. of these. There was a particularly sad moment after the third goal when the camera just cut mm. to a succession of really disappointed middle-aged women. It was like, <laughs> so it was like they'd found the sort of Middlesbrough dinner lady oh, fan fans, convention right, and, yeah. and just really focused on that. Yeah. I do, that was, the camera operators are doing their job, though. They are. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. uh, but Chelsea, they advance to their 10th League Cup final, their third in six seasons. They do love this competition, Peter. Yeah, and Middlesbrough advanced to Grantham Services on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, One o'clock in the morning. There we are. Oh. So, as a Newcastle fan with a bit of rivalry with Middlesbrough, presumably you're very happy that Chelsea beat them. Uh, well, I don't think there is much rivalry, is there? Is I, don't, there? I don't think there's any true oh, rivalry between uh, half his clubs, quite frankly. See there anymore, we go, you? look at that. Can't see the cell net. That's yeah, the, enjoy the nineties, did you lads? That's the bigger dig, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's like Andy brushing off um, you know, MK Dons beating AFC Wimbledon last night. No, they're not a proper club, don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> they're a pastiche, they're Kevin McAllister yeah, with cut outs at the in, window. Indeed. Your boys didn't need to have two men sent off at the end though, Andy. No, that was a naughty. disgrace. Yeah. Um we want to say for the record. Childish. Yeah. Indeed. Well, but Chelsea are through and, and Pochettino said that he's desperate to win a trophy. If they win the League Cup, Andy, we've got a good chance. Um is that papering over the cracks, do you think? Well, it's a start. Mm. I, I think the cracks are evident enough that there really is no... Bearing in mind, uh, Manchester United won it last season. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure you can really make the connection. Mm -hmm. I, I think any sort of success for Chelsea this, this season is, is useful. Any one of those nights at Stamford Bridge where the fans are able to enjoy it. And the fans generally have been really, really patient. The match-going fans have been very, very patient with the club and their strategy, and arguably, to an extent, Pochettino as well, because there have been some fans, complaints about him. They often get digs on this show. I, I think they are actually fairly patient, as fan bases go, with regards to the sort of managers and so on, because they're just so used to changes, I suppose. M maybe, maybe, but we're talking about a change from being consistently competitive at the top of the Premier League, mm -hmm. even when there's like chaos going on elsewhere in the club, mm -hmm. to being absolutely out of that. Yeah. So, you know, this would be a consolation. Uh, but I think, you know, the, I think if you go back to the beginning of when Frank Lampard was in charge as well, w when, you know, he was fairly successful within his remit, that's that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different him getting a, a little bit of slack, isn't it? Because he's a club legend. But now I think, you know, you're seeing... I'm very that... patient with the Rafa Benitez, is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Trying no, to I know say. what you mean. I, th I think that... You're right. I think that people, as we've talked about it before, there's, there is this sort of disrespect with the League Cup. It's like, yeah, you won the League Cup, but you finished seventh. So, what? you yeah. know, there's a very much a concentration on, on league form. Which but is... there's got to be a, a realistic expectation from for, for Chelsea at the beginning of this season. Yeah. I mean, like people who were saying, oh, I can see them sneaking into the top four. It's like, what are you talking about? No. Like, like, really? What are you talking about? I think this would be like a, a very nice consolation. Sneak into the last four, maybe. And they've snuck all the way into the last <laughs> yeah. two. There we go. So, that, so they, they, they could do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's an impressive win for Chelsea. I mean, people might say it's only championship opposition, but that is a bit disrespectful to Middlesbrough. A huge win, no doubt. Mm. Um, they'll it, be fancying themselves in the final. It just rem reminds me of the point that I think you yourself made, Marcus, a little while ago about how the two-legged semi-final yeah. here. Just yeah, yeah, is yeah. it makes it so much harder mm -hmm. for the the you know quote unquote smaller teams, and this is just the perfect illustration of it. If this was over one leg, we could have a really exciting situation. We can catch them cold. Final. Yeah, you exactly. can get a bit lucky on the night, or or, or 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 you can do very well on the night. You know, depending yeah. on you how can you have look that at first it. leg. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. There's just there's, there's no way that they're going to go through with with two legs. It's a very rare thing. I mean, I think it was oh now this yeah was it Bradford who did against Aston Villa sort of ten eleven years ago? But it's yes, yeah, it's, it's very very rare indeed. Oh, but it was a very, I mean, and, you know, the conditions you'd think would have suited Middlesbrough, wouldn't you, Peter? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Why? Because um, it was windy and cold. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and, and industrial. You know. Um, <laughs> in, in, <laughs> and, my, and my dad worked there. <laughs> Because <laughs> in the tropical southeast of England, you don't yeah, normally exactly, have cold yeah. weather, you see. <laughs> um, uh, it, it, indeed. Speaking of the weather, obviously, Storm uh, 
Aisha. Is it Aisha? Aisha. I don't know. I just launched it in that. Um, who did Death that song? Vegas. Death in Vegas and um, Iggy, Iggy Pop. Pop. Iggy Pop. Aisha. Yes. Oh, I'm a murderer. Got, I'm a murderer. Oh dear. He got out. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Any more? I'm very Can't deep. remember. I'd like you to do the one with Liam Gallagher, actually. Uh, how does it feel like? Oh, was it the Chemical Brothers? And Noel Gallagher, yeah. Noel Gallagher, yeah. 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 That's fine. But uh, look, I, I appreciate that. I, I had a go. That. You I had, had a go. That, and yeah. that's all we want, is that. Much like Middlesbrough, yeah, had a I go. I had a go. All right. Had a try. Um, yeah. Uh, Storm Irish has been obviously causing havoc in the country and also in, in, in football as well. Kendall Town FC and their fans have been stranded on the Isle of Man since Saturday because flights to Liverpool and Manchester aren't running until tomorrow. I love a bit of flight radar 24 where uh, just planes uh, are <laughs> flying over to one place and going, whoa, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. And going to Paris. Gonna land in Paris, yeah. One of them like landed in, I think they're trying to get to Edinburgh and then landed in like southern Spain or something. Absolutely. It's a result, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. potentially, that's great. <laughs> well, the one that landed in Paris, it took off from, was it Jersey? Going right. to England, yeah, and uh, and you don't need your passport for that, mm. even oh, though Jersey's yes, not. It's, it's, a uh, crown, yes. yeah. it's a special state. It's a crown protector. Yeah. It's not actually in the UK, but no. but you don't need your passport. Yeah. And they went, oh, I should better go to Paris, land in Paris, and it was like, uh, someone's not have passports. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you better stay on here then. Yeah, <laughs> crazy situation, Andy. So I, I guess the what we've been reduced to in this very, very quiet transfer window is not tracking what player is landing in the UK, but <laughs> yes, seeing where Kendall know, Town yeah. are at. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. true. That's well, true yeah. Speaking of harsh conditions, Andy, you brought this to our attention. Uh, Denmark's at FC Michelin spent three days camping in the Scottish Highlands fairly recently. All, um, all character building? Well, it was apparently designed for players to find out who they really are, and it turns out they're all cowards. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all uh, hunters Hungry and gatherers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, they didn't eat for stuff. 24 hours at one point. So I love that. to band together and essentially kill a deer. I <laughs> yeah, think. I, yeah. So God. I want to see, I wanna see what you've got. Finding the nearest boffy and just going to sleep for third, three days. <laughs> Yeah, lost. get a few berries from somewhere. Get a few berries. Eat some, made. eat some, some fermented berries, and yeah. just right, that's, go to sleep in a boffy. This sounds good in the short term, Pete. But what about when you get back to training and you have to explain yourself? I've been like, in the boffy. Everyone lads. else has lads. been in this amazing. This is, this is all about <laughs> survival. <laughs> ran and hid. Basically, <laughs> this is all about survival. Uh-huh. And I've just been in a boffy for three days. Build Grow up. I survived on the bench. We learned. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Pete always carries a cereal bar with him as well. I do, yeah. So, you know, What's that stuff that used to... Is it... P- not Pimento. Um, the thing that used to... Uh, like Explorers and, and um, uh, Native Australians, I think, used to... Uh, pemmican. Well, I don't know what that is. It no. used to have, like... Um, it was meat. Right. Like, really old, like, rabbit or something. Okay. And then you'd mix in, like, some fruits as well. Oh, is it like pemmican. the South Af- is it like, like that like the South African jerky you can get in corner shops? <laughs> yes. Built on. I love that stuff. Love a bit of built on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not enough fruit in it though. No, okay. Or um a can of spam if you've got a it. Can of spam. There we are. It can last for five years apparently, pemmican. Pemmican, so. yeah. <laughs> pemmican <laughs> can. I thought, I thought it's you the said meat the can. Why is why isn't everybody just eating pemmican? Yeah, it sounds like true. a sort of thing you drop at the gym. Yeah, not you... not everyone's prepared to just sort of go and live in the woods like you are. Right. <laughs> I just, I just dream. My life has got so busy uh-huh. recently. I just sort of I just want to live in the woods. Just, I could just always just live in the woods. <laughs> Trouble with the missus? No. <laughs> no. no. There's an island I can see. There's, it's called Two Tree Island. It's where people go to dog and fly RC planes. Um, <laughs> from my, and I can see it from my window, and I always think I could just live over there. For do a they bit. Uh-huh. do they combine those things? Because that's that is quite dangerous. <laughs> propellers yeah. flapping around. Uh, Captain dogging. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Well, um, everybody. Uh, yeah, um, I think we were talking about the League Cup a minute mm. ago. Um, we'll talk about uh, Fulham and Liverpool. Um, in the second half, which of course is happening um, tonight. Important information in terms of people travelling around and mm. so on. We go to Jose Mourinho watch, everybody. He was spotted arriving at Barcelona Airport on Sunday and El Chiringuito, of course, were immediately on the yeah, scene. See, when I read You this, love El Chiringuito. <laughs> yeah, when, when, I, when I saw this, I was really, really excited. Yeah. Like, new El Chiringuito is destroyed. Can you explain <laughs> they, they never miss. In case one, if a few people don't know El, El Chiringuito, how the, would you explain The director of El Chiringuito just Couldn't has... not explain El Chiringuito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's, like, he's like a toddler with five scoops of Nesquik in, right. a, in a glass of milk. Yeah. He, like, he's mad. <laughs> it's a really, really over the top, dramatic Spanish football kind of chat show. It's TMZ it's on, for teenagers. On it's spot. Absolutely, yeah, it's a telenovela, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, it's, yeah. It's, but it's it's Japanese television for the Europeans. It's yeah, very, Sugoi. It's, again, for those who haven't got those descriptions, <laughs> Jim, yeah, it's it's just absolute chaos. It's yeah. live. 
it's really over the top. They seem to they treat football like it's very very serious. Well, it's, news, it's, it's like a soap opera. About things absolutely very much like a soap opera. Which can't. So generally good. they don't miss, and I'm I'm, I'm excited if a yeah. new El Chiringuito drops. This one mm. is just someone holding a microphone up at Jose Mourinho, asking him questions that he's ignoring. It's like come on, Jose, yeah. Yeah. But come on. But they like El Chiringuito is streamed on Twitch twenty four seven, and it, it, you turn it on any time. Yeah. They are doing an instant replay of a looped ball and a nothing handball just outside. <laughs> The, the box. Is it always on? It's always on. What, it's like a 24-hour thing? Yeah. I, mean, I don't I know if it's 24 hours, but it's certainly on all the time on Twitch. Is that why I they're always it's... turning the light off <laughs> in the yeah. studio? Yeah. So yeah. Joseph yeah. Pedro can just get 40 <laughs> winks so it's just, for it's the kind next of, section. So, so you've just got people with like iPhone like and uh, on Zoom, like really brightly lit Zoom rooms, mm. and they're just screaming at the television, just watching this kind of same crappy decision in the Spanish League, just re- repeated <laughs> over and over again. Uh, it's it's just compulsive viewing by the I'll get it up now I'll see yeah, what they're up to oh, it's still the same decision <laughs> um, well yeah so, so so Mourinho is there what's he doing in Barcelona what is it? What I mean genuinely what is he doing there he's got a house there <laughs> yes yes they're watching planes <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, it's, it's Mourinho there's Mourinho in taking Williams off plane. <laughs> What are they doing? What are they doing, uh, Andy? Inyaki 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 Williams coming back, literally coming home from the African Cup of Nations. Beautiful. They're watching the plane land. And there's the plane landing. There's the plane landing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he'd be getting out any minute. That's how it works. That's how it Um, works. Yeah, Mourinho in Barcelona is is a strange one. Maybe he's just gone there to say, "Oh, I've got more money than you lot." That's what he's doing. It's the timing, isn't it? It's the fact that Xavi is under extraordinary pressure at the moment. Said he'll leave at the end of the season if he doesn't win a trophy, Andy. It's much easier to say that when you know he said that the day before Atletico Madrid were playing Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey. Do you reckon Brave that? man, eh? Yeah. I mean... He could have done with that Saudi Super Cup thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's more chance <laughs> of any of us being offered the Barcelona job than Jose Mourinho, of course. Is Jose petty enough, though, that he would come to Barcelona just to create these rumours? That's exactly mm. what he's doing. he's doing, yeah. Exactly what he's doing. Got no reason mm. to be there. I love the fact that there's, there's chat that Napoli are reportedly lining talks up with him. Mm. <laughs> Mourinho in Napoli. Glorious nonsense. Um, there's also reports in France that... Um, Newcastle United are interested in him. I mean, I, I could see it happening, to be honest. Really? You, would you want it? Can't, Newcastle sp- can't spend any money, so what do you do to, you know, drop a bit of LSD in the water? <laughs> you just need <laughs> Surely, the, Jose Mourinho. Surely the last person you get in if you can't spend <clears throat> any money. Well, well, yeah, true, but I could see him doing it. Yeah. You, um, it, it, would be it, has been, it is going to be a fallow year for Newcastle, isn't it? So true enough. We're not going to do any, anything in Europe. I, season, so. Do they not have enough tyrants? Yeah. You don't want to add well, Jose to the yeah. mix, do you? That's true, yeah. I mean, p- presumably, Andy, there's no truth in this. It's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. Mm, okay, that's that's sad. Uh, where, would, where would you... I, I mean, what about the Napoli one? Is there any kind I could, of... I could see that happening. <clears throat> I mean, in, unless they want to let the rest of this season peter out into nothingness. They brought back Walter Mazzari, who's had a very dry 10 years mm-hmm. since he's left Napoli. And, you know, they're already not great form, has totally tanked. Mm. Since since he's come back, I think to create that sense, why he did so well at Roma, and let's be fair, that most of the Roma fans were really yeah. sorry to see him yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I think what he did so well is he created that sense of, as Nicky was saying on uh, OTC, I will fight for you. It's us against the world. I Napoli love a bit of that. Mm. You know, that's one yeah. of the reasons why Maradona succeeded there. Totally, yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. That's it. All right, everybody. Coming up in the second half, we've got uh, Calvin Phillips, um, Miggy Almiron, and some wonderful scenes in the Africa Cup of Nations. See you in a moment. Gleason has the ball and dims it in towards the penalty area. Brennan Camp does a very good job there of holding Mycock. Maycock, rather. Oh, dear. Welcome back to the Football Ramble, everybody. Right then, uh, let's have some transfer chat. West Ham and Manchester City have agreed a loan deal for Calvin Phillips. It's happening. Mm. He's going to play some football, you would think. But if James Ward-Prowse keeps him out the side, he's going to go, bloody hell! Come on! <laughs> um, but yeah, he's made just 31 appearances for Manchester City since uh, signing from Leeds in July 2022. Genuinely surprised it's that many. I presume a lot of them are off the bench for like, bench for like two minutes, but still. And in the League Cup. Yeah. yeah. Uh, several other clubs were interested, but the, the loan fee was, was apparently what put uh, some people off, including Newcastle United. Yeah. Um, were you surprised it was West Ham, considering some of the teams that were in the name? I mean, it was Juventus were... I'm not, actually. Purely because... Um, 
they they're clearly kind of looking to make some moves in this window. They're mm. one of the few clubs that are being linked with a lot of names and seem to be actively looking at stuff. Apparently, they were they were looking at a loan deal for Emil Smith Rowe, um, which Arsenal didn't sanction. But uh, there's talk of like um, Wilfred Nonto as well, a few other players knocking about. I think they understand that they're in a really good position again. They mm. want to consolidate. It makes sense for them to try and do some smart business now. I imagine they've gone early on Phillips, maybe paid a little bit more on the loan fee just to get him because they have a brilliant squad at the moment. And if they can if they can get Phillips in, maybe keep him around. Maybe it says to some of those other players they have, those real, you know, really exciting players <laughs> that yeah. we're building something here. We mm. might do something, stick around for a bit, and who knows what might happen. Slightly building on that, I think the Sheffield United game at the weekend is what makes you think <clears throat> we'll spend a little bit extra and mm -hmm. get Calvin Phillips in. Because even though the numbers don't look horrendous, they've not defended that well this season. That defence really needs a bit of extra protection in front of it that you think Phillips would provide. Mm. The other thing is Edson Alvarez, he's been really good since they go there. Yeah. You look at how the front part of the team has sort of been decimated by um, losing Pakatar, by mm. Kudus going off. Um, and, and, you know, they're incredibly reliant on Bowen, of, of, of course. If Alvarez went down, they would be absolutely stuck. Mm -hmm. Absolutely stuck. So you feel that, Phillips could play next to Alvarez or instead of him as well. Because presumably after the last year and a half, you can't have Phillips coming in and playing every week immediately. Mm. And West Ham have European football as well. I yeah. assume yeah. Calvin Phillips, he wouldn't be cup tied because if, if he did play, he would have been in the Champions League, so it would be fine for the Europa League. Well, that, that doesn't make any difference. It's, it's a UA for competition, but you can have three players that switch over now. Oh, okay. So, right, yeah. so that that that's fine. So it's it's kind mm -hmm. of like a a, a cup tie joker, mm -hmm. if you if you like. But the, the, all the other clubs you were talking about, the the big clubs that we're interested in, in mm -hmm. to some extent, they all inquired. I don't know how prepared they were to go the full way because mm -hmm. all the other clubs that were were linked for him just don't have the money to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Juventus don't have the money to make mm -hmm. it happen. Barcelona don't have the money to make it happen. Yeah. Newcastle, we know the spot they're in. But also as well, I mean, you know. West Ham, as you say, Jim, are a club with a good squad who are having a decent season. And we've talked about Moyes and uh, are all the fans, you know, enjoying the football that much. From, but in terms of playing and in terms of the profile, it's there. I mean, do you think David Moyes, when he was making his uh, sales pitch to Calvin Phillips, says, look, I'm, you know, obviously you've got the Euros in mind in the summer, you want to get minutes under your belt. And he just said, is uh, what happened when Jesse Lingard came on loan that time? And then played in the goals, and when even he got into the England squad, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got you've got all the chance in the world. I, I mean, I'm very pleased because we know he's a talented player, and obviously it helps England as well. And that's always the bigger picture. Yeah. But it will be good to see him playing some football because it's been such a waste at Manchester City. I mean, Pep yeah. pretty much said that as well. Yeah. I mean, I understand it's not Pep plays the team he thinks is, is best, and when we say oh, he, he signed for a huge amount of money, yeah, it seems pretty grotesque for most clubs, but we know Manchester City have got it. And, you know, as I say, Drake Grealish was 100 million when he first went there and sat on the bench to kind of get the the, the, the style and, and mm. the tactics and all. So for them to bench Phillips and not play him is not absolutely outrageous like it would be for some other sides. Mm. But for, 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 for what Pep was saying, I think he was a bit like, yeah, he really needs to play football. He's not going to play here. So it's, it's, a, it's a good deal all round. Really. Yeah, but I think it was interesting in what Guardiola said. That he, he he actually sounded in his own passive aggressive way like really quite disappointed in Calvin Phillips. There was a bit of that, yeah. And I, I think in that sense, Phillips has actually got a lot to prove over the next four or five months, hasn't mm -hmm. he? He does. He does. Um, gentlemen, let's turn our attention uh, back to Newcastle United, if we can. Miguel Almiron could be off to Al Shabab in Saudi Arabia. People are often quick to point out uh, which clubs are owned by the Piff Posse and which aren't. Um, I, I don't think we should differentiate too much uh, between that group and the other group because... Uh, I'm sure that's the full extent of their influence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, what do you think of this one, Peter? Newcastle United need money. Um, uh -huh. There's a club in Saudi Arabia that are offering big money for Miggy. But, and, but uh, that, that's the thing. It's convenient all round, I'm saying. Uh, every uh, transfer from Newcastle United <laughs> to any uh, team in Saudi is, uh, Arabia is obviously uh, uh, ridiculous. Uh, Al Shabab does mean the youth, and he's a youthful looking guy. He is. So that does fit. But, um, okay. but, the, well, but the price. I'm no more further, further questions. <laughs> but the price. <laughs> <laughs> but the price, but the price, people are. Kind of, that's what I don't understand. Obviously, the mm. the the um, relation with any Saudi Arabian club is, is a fucking disgrace and a joke. But thirty million for an established Premier League footballer mm -hmm. who's who was last injured for more than thirty days back in 
2018, 2019. Oh, like, yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a mainstay. He's got Champions League experience. Mm-hmm. Why is everyone bar- bar- barking at 30 million for me? Exactly. He's 29. I don't exactly. understand it. It's, it's, it's mates rates, well, basically, it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, massively. I, th- I think you have a school of thought that some people are thinking that's a good price and others are saying, but I mean, that, that, that's, that's pretty cheap because f- maybe some people who haven't watched Newcastle that much you know, remember They're still remembering, yeah, they that, couldn't score, couldn't score. Well, you have those Benitez who, yeah. Yeah, era. You have, yeah. you, you have that era. Then you have those who remember when he couldn't stop scoring. He scored yeah. that volley at Fulham and all that. Whereas actually the truth is sort of somewhere in between. I mean, an incredibly hardworking player, but does lack a little bit of quality sometimes. I don't know about that. I think he's consistently impactful. Okay. I, I think if you're selling him... He has him, his critics. If you're selling him, fine. But if you're selling him on the open market, I think... Forty million, or maybe yeah. a little bit more, is, is is fair enough. Double your money from the from the record that we paid. But you, <laughs> but, Twenty million. Or but are you surprised then? I mean, Newcastle have had their injuries. If you're saying that Miguel Almiron is a player who you know brings all that kind of stuff, then then why are they selling him? Is it purely just FFP? That yeah, might, because yeah. They, they've got Gordon, they've got Harvey Barnes. You don't want to sell Joe Linton. You don't want to sell Bruno Guimaraes. Ideally, clearly, they don't want to sell Kieran Trippier either. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's it's and and Newcastle obviously now have probably I mean <clears throat> the club have um over the past few kind of months been quite underhand with their public protestations that they need to sell and do all the stuff that they that they say they purport to to, to to have to do and it looks like accounts wise that that's certainly the case um but um when when you have that reputation of being a selling club you 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 are kind of open to a, a lot of bids and that's what's happening at the moment I think. Um, clubs like Bayern, they obviously need a right back, and obviously the price goes up. If you're trying to bid on the interview with like twelve million euros or twelve million pounds, mm. like you're not going to prize um, a really important player, a talismanic player mm-hmm. away from Newcastle United. But Mickey Almiron, I mean, I, I I think he should go for more. I don't want to go to Saudi Arabia. That's no. ridiculous. Apparently, he doesn't need... want to go as well, which is a yeah. big factor. Oh, well, there's a conflicting Poor reports though. Mickey. Some people saying he's up for it. Right. So so it it, it really does depend. I mean. <sighs> The thing is, it's the the lack of transparency is the issue, isn't it? Yes. Whether it seems like a sort of fair market rate for him or not, that that is always going to be the issue. Even mm. if they get him for absolute peanuts, it's yeah. it's the it's really the process is the issue. But don't you think it's going to become potentially more difficult to sell players to Saudi Arabia, whether you're Newcastle, Chelsea, anyone else, because we're getting the first wave of players going actually. A bit shit. Well, it was like yeah. the Chinese. I don't, I don't, league, I don't, wasn't it? Yeah. So, mm, so yeah. well, that was that was different because they quite visibly run out of money, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, government policy changed. But to have players, I mean, it's one thing Jordan Henderson going, I don't like it here. It's one thing Amrik Laporte going, oh, there's quite a lot of traffic in Riyadh, or or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's another thing, Karen Benzema going, yeah, I'm not into it. Well, um, there are other players uh, <laughs> that could leave Newcastle United. You say Kieran Trippier is one of them. I mean. They turned down twelve point eight million pounds for him. Now he's an important player. He's thirty three though. So yeah, yeah. I but think like, why why would you do that to yourself? Well, you have like, got Liveramento to come in if if, if he's. Um... But he's not at, it, at that point. His career he's still not Kieran Trippy with the influence he has. He's on. He's, yeah. he's the on pitch cap. That's like, it. It just seems that's insane. it. Isn't it? Buy and testing trippier though it'll like the go, idea of going yeah and it'll go, it, giant like that I'm, is, i've got that, no that doubt great. in my mind there will be more bids um close you know you t- twenty million euros but i just can't see. It's just not good business for Newcastle, and and uh, you know I, I know Bayern have got a couple of other uh, players that they they they're also looking at, at, at right back, but they really need someone, and and I think uh, apparently but half the Bayern Munich kind of higher ups aren't convinced by what Kieran Trippier can, can bring, which surprises me because it's like have you seen him play? He's brilliant. Yeah, they're looking at the mistake. <laughs> they're still remembering the, those. the header. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the although you could say that you could say the last couple of months some, mm. something's happened with his form, hasn't it? But mm. I think it's funny. This is what happens. When you let Thomas Tuchel like step <laughs> overstep the mark and do whatever, yeah. he's like, I know, I know a load of guys from the Premier yeah, League. I love it. They'll all want to, they'll all want to play for me. Yeah. They're, they're 33. I don't give a shit. We got the money. Also, I'm not going to be here in six months, yeah. so I don't give a shit if he's 33. Come he's on. getting the band back together. But he the, is, yeah. But the band is hard fi. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Kane Dyer and him. I was about to say, I, I think it's also a case They're hard to beat. Harry Kane, who do you want? Who, 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 who are your favourite people in that England squad? Because we'll get them all in. Yeah. Then we'll exactly, do that. Yeah. Uh, did you see that Atletico Madrid made a loan offer for Callum Wilson? Yeah. Yeah. Again, Again, like, there's nothing Again, in that for Newcastle. <laughs> it's such like a going, bad We've offer. heard they're a selling club, but yeah. we're not even going to bother. Just are people just taking one? the piss out of Newcastle now? Is everyone annoyed maybe. at what's the happening? Piss posse. Yeah, trying, yeah, <laughs> trying to just clog up all the admin. Yeah, just keep them busy so they don't do anything. I yeah. think if you're Callum Wilson, you'd be really flattered by that, wouldn't you? I, do, I mean, if, 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 it's, if it's up to him, you surely would take that. Yeah, I, well, I, I just can't. I mean, 
Am I right in thinking Alexander Isak would be the literally the only other striker there? Apart um, from yeah, maybe but, like I mean, the I, I think valuable old. striker. <laughs> I would say valuable striker. No, but from, so I'm talking from the... Wilson's point of view. Yeah. Is that not a flattering thing that a club the size of Atletico Madrid, who were fourth Give him Jeff Hendrick. He's done the books. Is he really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think if, if you were Wilson, then it was up to you. Surely you would go. Just, you know, five months or whatever it would be out in Madrid. It would be one. It would be podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be one month out of five that he's fit. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, well, you know, you know, put your feet up and enjoy the yeah, tapas for exactly. the rest of it, I would mm. say. Um, there, there has been um, r- reports about other players. Bruno Guimaraes, you, you don't want to lose him, of course. He did go to Disneyland Paris uh, recently, so that does I mean, mean he's Disney, going to PSG. Disneyland Paris in January. Yeah. Yes. There's not a Wayne Rooney lolly big enough I, I, to, <laughs> to, to, to solve that wound. Paris is so oh, cold in the winter as well. <laughs> it's like, I can, I, I sort of love this, that people have put two and two together like that. Um, <laughs> I love the idea that PSG might try and woo players by going, eh, we've got amazing a- access to Disneyland. <laughs> access to Disneyland. <laughs> Imagine, I, I can understand Stoke doing that with Alton Towers. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the best thing. Yeah. I think PSG are probably a bit more yeah. big time than that. It's one of the five places you can fly to directly from your castle that's not in Poland, basically. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, anyway, speaking of uh, Englishmen abroad, let us go to the United States of America. Here he goes. Here we go. This is, and you're right to whisper it, Jim. Um, Harvey Neville is currently on trial with Portland Timbers. Now, of course, Harvey Neville uh, is signed to Inter Miami at the moment, but he's having a trial all the way, the opposite end of the country with Portland Timbers. How will he, how, do you reckon, how do you think it's fair in this trial? Marcus? Well, um, <laughs> will let, he do his chores? Let me remind you that his dad fizzes in uh, charge of Portland Timbers. Yeah, yes, <laughs> Neville, baby. <laughs> Never, oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, get your get your photography book out. Love it. Can can we send for Harvey now? No, you've been you've been here for two days, right? Just wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> can we send for Harvey? No, let us get Christmas out of the way. And now he's going. No, I mean it's lovely, isn't it, Andy? I play it. The, the thing is, I know it's easy to get stuck into Phil Neville over this, mm. but like, coaches do this left All and right all the time. The, yeah. the, Usually, the, ex-Man United coaches. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the guy who's the coach of. Her to Berlin, Pal Dardai. He's got three of his sons playing in the in, in the first eleven. Hey, keep, keep them, you know, keep an eye on them. That's the thing. Isn't I'm, it? Sure, I'm sure they're very good. Yeah. <laughs> Second division mid table herter uh-huh. who spent four hundred million on players over the last five years. Yeah, I I, I just I just think it's lovely. I I, I really really do. It's just had, Harvey Neville just had a lot. Of sh- there's a, if you take take Harvey Neville to Google, there's a lot of shirts he's worn. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of shirts he's worn. Yeah, I did. Well, we, like we wish him we wish him luck, of course. Yeah. Um, very, uh, it's not too late for the Euros. Right, let's uh, move on to the Africa Cup of Nations. Blimey. Now, this tournament has been quite something for, for shocks and for, for drama. Well, Cameroon, who we really enjoyed watching at the World Cup in Qatar, who have provided us with some, some great moments there, they qualified for the last 16 after a chaotic win against the Gambia. One of the, the commentators calling them the Gambia, the co-commentator was calling them Gambia. Okay. He's going to lose his voice, that bloke. Oh not, my goodness. Not I love the BBC is, commentator. He's brilliant. He's so passionate. He's not only doing a lot of games, but he gets excited very quickly. I love well. him. I can't and, get and enough yet, of him. Yet maintains that level of excitement. But And also, but he's a good commentator because you think mm. sometimes with commentators like that, they're kind of you're a more local commentator and say like FA Cup early rounds or something. Yeah. Whereas this guy, I, I think he's a business. He's definitely mastered circular breathing to keep <laughs> up that level of intensity. He's like the Miles Davis of commentary. Yeah, I like that. But he, I mean, it just he was losing his mind because Cameroon went two one down against uh, Gambia in the eighty fourth minute, and they needed to win, and they did. They came back three two, and then moments after, well, minutes after Cameroon got the third in the ninety first minute, Gambia had a corner and it came in. And it, uh, it was quick. It looks like at first viewing that the guy does nod it in. Mm. The company, you are kidding me! <laughs> well, of course he was because it was a clear handball. Yeah. And VAR did its job, Jim didn't it? Campbell. Did you see that handball? Yeah. It was How blatant. Scandalous. <laughs> but it was, it was at the point where it's like he's got no other choice at that oh, point. Totally. Apart from move his head. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you... Oh, <laughs> commit! Yeah. Commit! Dive at it! <laughs> um, oh, man. What, what, what a game it was. Um, but yeah, they qualified behind Senegal, who beat Guinea 2-0. Uh, one of the most wonderful stories of, of AFCON this time round. We've enjoyed Bebe and Cape Verde. But Mauritania. Mm. They beat Algeria 1-0 to knock out Algeria, who mm. won the competition uh, uh, previously. Uh, but this was um, their first ever AFCON win, and they've gone through to the next round. And you saw what it meant to them. 
after the game. Abubakar Kamara, or AK-47, as I believe he wants to be called now, like punching his chest. And he's only been playing for them for a couple of years, but he gets it. And and there was a great summary of their journey on uh, uh, Twitter um, by, or should I say X, of course, by um, Sadiq Adams, who is a Ghanaian journalist. Um, and and, and he, he, he talked about Mauritania, how between 1995 and 2003, they never won a single football match. They withdrew from um, the AFCON qualifiers of 2010 due to financial crisis. In 2011, they were ranked 207th by FIFA. They were practically the poorest country, uh, football country, should I say, in the world. Um, and then they, they, they got a new president in. They restructured the league, set up youth teams, blah, 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 blah. They, they, they used the money from the FIFA Gold Project funds, um, re renovated their stadium, headquarters. And so this is a real success story, Yeah. especially from FIFA. You know, we, we, we stick the boot into FIFA and rightly so. But the money FIFA gave them, they, they, they really, really used. And, and on his tour of, of Africa... Um, Infantino praised Mauritania as one of the few African countries with proper accountability on their FIFA funds. There's a, there's a video online I, I, to, to show you. It's the, like the it's like an African version of Iceland, basically, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but I mean, if you take into account more, so, like it's even more spectacular, of course. In terms more of extreme. time scale, yeah. yeah. Well, in terms of time scale, in terms of in terms of everything, and, and where they've come from as well. Yeah, completely, completely. Um, so to win their first game, but not just that to go through. And that's what it is. You know, with these footballing stories, you want people to create legacies and to have, have, hang your hat on something. So you yeah. can say to the youngsters, look, do you remember that video? Or if you were too young in years to come, look at that. Yeah. To beat mm. Algeria too, a team who won it in 2019, a huge, yeah. huge name in African football. Totally. To, to, to go through at their expense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely seismic. Yeah, it is. Um, so, yeah. I st yeah, it, 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 it's glorious. So it's, it's kind of shaping up. Um, Angola went through top of the group, beating Burkina Faso as well. Um, Ghana, who Ghana. went out, of course. I still, I still cannot believe they're out. There was the, did you see the footage of Mohamed Kudus who was given the man of the match? He was just, he was gutted. He was yeah. bereft. I hope mm. he can raise it when he gets back to London for crying out loud because I mean, he was absolutely <laughs> heartbroken. But they've sacked Chris Hewton yeah. after, after they've gone out. Um, well, I think it, it, it's, it's their second very poor Afcon in a row, like Algeria, really. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's clearly not all down to him. Actually, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? It's always amazing when you have a major world or, or um, continental championship and the way at which all the emotions are intensified. So mm. the coaches just go like that, 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 that. And so you had uh, Jamal Bamadi as well leaving Algeria straight away. I mean, he told the players in the dressing room afterwards that I'm, I'm off. Yeah. What, I, I guess you could say with both Hugh and, and Belmadi, you know, there's no option. You know, it's obvious mm. because of the way it ended mm. and because of the way that last game ended for... Ghana. Um, and now this is quite nice. We got um, our, our listener and, and friend of the Ramble, Paddy, got in touch with us on Discord. And we've been talking about Cape Verde, loving them, of course, loving Bebe. Um, and Paddy said, well, I just listened to Monday's Ramble when we were chatting about Cape Verde struggling for players. Cape Verde, should I say. Um, and he said, well, I went to school with one of their centre-backs currently at the AFCON. Uh, he's born and bred in Ireland, which is where Paddy's from as well, um, plays in the League of Ireland and got called up to the Cape Verde squad in 2019 because the manager messaged him on LinkedIn. He nearly ignored it because he thought, for obvious reasons, it was a scam. <laughs> but he got in yeah. touch. The centre-back is Roberto Lopez and he plays with Shamrock Rovers. Pete, don't, you've always got to check your LinkedIn. I, I do, but the only LinkedIn message I always get is from LinkedIn saying, please add Luke Moore as one of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I've, I've not done it. Well, so. well, Luke's trying to offer you something. It he might is, not yeah, be a place <laughs> in, in a potential AFCON uh, side. Yeah, I think he's trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, yeah. It's a um, trick, but that, I mean that is that is great stuff. It's it's enjoyable. It's an it? enjoyable. It's I mean, how do you get in touch with players? I mean, surely there's a database of phone numbers or something that can be. But is there? But there isn't because the football is the wild west. We assume yeah. there's so much infrastructure in football, but there isn't. It's all just fax machines and and phone well, calls. Well, look at Brereton Diaz. How he, he yes, came about? Yes, exactly. Football it was, manager. Yeah. It was it was um, a group of Chilean supporters mm. who always sort of troll football manager and so on, seeing mm. are there any players who could be eligible for Chile? Mm. And and they found him, and that and that's how He's that only came about. Time. Yeah, yeah. There you see, Andy. It all makes sense in the end. Yeah, I think so. It's just all modern versions of uh, Roy S and Doe getting uh, called up on mm. teletext by mm. uh, Wickham. Oh, yeah. And then scoring no, a winner in the cup at Leicester. He, he never got called up. They they put the call out and then he responded. That would be odd trying to specifically Get communicate with him. Get called up for him. a club team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perhaps a slightly uh, misguided it's not, it's not lexicon. Like jury service, is it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sadly. Um, uh, who would you fancy for AFCON? You think Senegal? Could they, could they retain it? Well, they, they look the most reliable so far, don't they? They do, yeah. yeah. Although I do, I mean, let's let's see, obviously. But, but Nigeria with uh, Alex Iwobi and uh, Calvin Bassey in there. The Fulham boys, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to comment or just laugh? <laughs> I'm just going to laugh. Up yours then. Um, well, let's talk about Fulham then. Uh, they play Liverpool tonight. And it's, you know, I am worried. I'll yeah. be honest mm. with you. We're going, aren't we? We are going. Jim I Campbell. feel like we're going to wh- like watch a snuff movie. I, I feel <laughs> like <laughs> right. I'm mentally preparing myself in the same way that I would yeah. do for that. Is that because um, you're going back to the scene of where Arsenal lost 2-1? That, that might be it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shove it up your bollocks. Yeah. Well, I'm, well I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that Fulham are going to give Liverpool a battering, actually, mate. I don't see how Liverpool are going to get past Portugal's longest man. That's true. Uh, I think home advantage is huge. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is. Well, um, despite you being at the game, I'm going to be doing a Ramble Reacts with Andy afterwards. Uh, so do come and join us as as um, we plan uh, Fulham's Carabao Cup trophy parade. Uh, so, yes, I'll have been to the game. Um, you know, you may see me doing knee slides in the, in, on the pitch of the stand if uh, Fulham are, are, are victorious. But that episode will be available soon after the game finishes. I've got to get home, obviously, first. Yeah, yeah if you could limit, Jim, his post-match celebrations, that would be much you know, appreciated. Uh, you know I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't cage such a beast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim and Marcus at this match is going to be like, um, you know, that's in Hostel where, where the businessmen are bat- better on stuff I just like two <laughs> crazy men watching a murder <laughs> Where's that pressing come their from? little buttons where's that come from <laughs> absolutely outrageous um, but uh, but <laughs> fair uh, thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble part of the ACAST Creator Network patron subscribers don't go anywhere keep listening for Ramble Uncut and if you're not a patron subscriber sign up to get Ramble Uncut every single Wednesday head over to patreon.com forward slash a football ramble do follow us on Twitter currently known as X TikTok YouTube and Instagram at football ramble and don't forget to subscribe on your podcast app thank you Andy thank you thank you PT farewell thank you Jimmy thank you and good luck Fulham cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel which means you will not miss a single upload